Hi everybody, I'm Ashley Morrison. Now, uh, if you're a hockey fan, you've probably heard my voice commentating some of the games around the world. And like you, I'm being starved of the game at the moment and I really wish there was plenty of action. But the next best thing we've got is a conversation with some of the Kookaburras. And first up, it's great to welcome Tim Howard. Tim, welcome. Thanks, Ash. Thanks for much, man. Well, I suppose the first question is when the high performance program shut down and you guys were all allowed to go home, you had the chance to go back to Queensland, but you actually opted to stay here in Perth. What made you yeah. make that decision? Um, yeah, well, yeah, firstly, yeah, I stayed back. Um, I think it was a Monday morning. We sort of had the opportunity to either go home or stay. Um, and, yeah, it was a tough one for me. I really wanted to go home and see my little sisters and mum and, and the family and things like that. But, um, yeah, I, I just decided to stay because I've sort of got everything here that I need to Um like you can always call and FaceTime and things like that. Uh, and I've got plenty here to keep busy. So um, as much as we're indoors, um, there's still a bit I can do with uni and things like that. So, yeah. Was it a hard decision? Because I'm sure, you know, you're away from your family a fair amount. It would have been, as you said there, great to go home and see all of them. Yeah. Yeah, it was a pretty tough decision. Um, it, was, it was pretty tough with mum. She was really excited uh, for me to head home. But um, at that time, uh, with the virus and things like that that was going on, the only real cases were cases from either travel or flying and things like that, or the cruise ship, um, as everyone's aware of. So, um, yeah, I sort of just made the decision to stay and, um, and yeah, better be safe than sorry, really. And I believe you share a house with fellow Kookaburras, Tom Craig, Lachlan Sharp and uh, Tim Brand. So you've got the yeah. house to yourself. because Yeah, they yeah. Back home. So is that really one of the reasons you stayed? A bit of peace and quiet from there? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they're good. They're great housemates to live with. Um, those boys actually drove back uh, through South Australia and uh, Tom, yeah, stopped off in Adelaide where his family is and uh, Tim and, and Locke uh, went back to Sydney and Lithgow where they're from. Uh, but no, they're great. And um, but yeah, the house is pretty empty at the moment. Um, I've actually been yeah living with my girlfriend, Sab, for the last little bit in between my house and her house. So um, in some sense, it's been good to have sort of two places. There's no real place you can get cabin fever. Um, yeah, because we have two houses at the moment, essentially. Um, but no, they're great. And we've we've sort of spoken most days, whether it's about, um, you know, things are going on in the, in the media, whether it's about the economy or something like that, or, or just catching up. Um, no, it's been, it's been, yeah, different, I would have to say. I mean, when you're living with the guys, who normally does the cooking? And, and are you a good cook? And, or is your <laughs> girlfriend doing all the cooking at the moment? <laughs> Um, I would say I'm, I'm a pretty average cook. Um, I can do the staples, not too bad. Um, but with us four boys, um, Tim and Tom do do a lot of the cooking, and um, they love it. Uh, Tim loves his cooking, and um, me and Locke are the boys that mop up after him. So um, no, it's good. It's a good dynamic, and I think now that we've been living together for for a while now, it's um, yeah, we've got a pretty good routine, and, and yeah, we're pretty happy. Now, obviously, it's difficult for you guys because you want to maintain some level of fitness. How have you been able to do that in this period of isolation? Uh, yeah, it's been pretty tough. I've sort of, um, I was when I was a bit younger, I was really into uh, more long distance running, so um, sort of ten k runs and things like that. So um, I've sort of taken the opportunity to get back into something that I really enjoyed, like that. So I've been going on a few long runs, a um, few times a week. Um, and then something a bit different as well that I've been doing with Jez Haywood um, is just a bit of swimming. So we head up to uh, head up to Hillary's where the shark net is up there and just do do a few laps in the morning. And then um, it's also a really good routine, you know, like wake up pretty early in the morning, go for a swim, have a coffee. Um, and then in the after afternoons, go for a bit of run. So there's still that little bit of structure um, in what we're doing. But, yeah, it's certainly tough at the moment. I believe that you, you say there you like to go for a run, but I believe, I believe you also like a good walk. In other words, a round of golf. Have you been able to have a round of golf? Yeah. That a no-no at the moment. No, no, I haven't played any golf at the moment. Uh, I think the courses may still be open here in Perth um, to play by yourself or in pairs. But, no, I haven't had a hit in a while, actually, which is a bit disappointing. But, um, but no, I've been keeping busy in other, in other ways. What's your handicap? Have you got a nice low one? <laughs> no, nah, no handicap. I'm probably probably more of an average golfer, just going over here, a bit of fun with the boys. Um, but yeah, it's good fun playing when we play um, together as a four, my housemates. Um, it's good fun, a bit of banter and things like that. So yeah. Now you mentioned there obviously a routine, and, and as we know with elite athletes, 
routine is one of the things that helps you keep that discipline and everything. Have you found in this period it's been very easy to be self-motivated without having obviously Colin Batch and uh, Potter and Hammond watching over you? <laughs> um, no, it's not been too bad. Um, as I said, the mornings where I get up and go for a swim and then have a little run in the afternoon, um, it's been quite good. Um, otherwise, if you know you get on a little bit in the day and wake up a little bit later, sometimes it's hard to, to get motivated for the day. So, um, no, it's been different, that's for sure. Um, not having to get up for training or things like that and just being a bit flexible with, um, yeah, with what we're doing. So, yeah, I've just taken the opportunity to do something a little bit different that I guess I've never really been able to do with swimming and longer runs because training's always been, been on. But, um, yeah, you just got to make the most of it and I guess it is what it is really. I suppose if we take you back now, I mean, because you're from Queensland originally, when did the hockey bug bite you? Yeah. Um, yeah, my, my nan, my grandmother and my mum had a lot to do with that. Um, they, they really love hockey. It's quite a family sport for me. Um, and also my cousins, Matt and Hugh Pembroke, who play for the, uh, for the hockey one team the, with the Brisbane Blaze. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was really a family thing. Um, we all just sort of love playing hockey and, and that sort of thing. And I think once I got to about sort of 12, 13, 14, when, um, when you're able to, to, yeah, sort of make uh, representative teams, that's when I sort of thought, oh, this is pretty cool. You know, like my mates are going and representing Queensland and playing national championships. Like I want to do the same thing. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, when I was probably between 10 and 14, that sort of age, I was really loving it. Uh, haven't hit in the backyard most days after school, things like that. So, um, so yeah, I would say, yeah, when I was in the young teens. You, you mentioned your grandmother, and I believe she's been a big support of yours throughout your career. I and mean, again, it yeah. must be hard. She's over in Queensland. You're over mm -hmm. here. But how much has she motivated you, encouraged you and kept you going? Yeah, no, they've been really good, uh, really motivating and encouraging. But they've also been quite good in, in not pushing me too hard sort of thing. You know, it was always up to me what I wanted to do, whether it was with study or, or whatever else it was. Um, you know, it was always up to me and what I wanted. But, um, yeah, when they're there to support and motivate me, it's been, yeah, it's been really good. And, and um, both, yeah, my, my nan and my mum love travelling around to, to various hockey tournaments and things like that. Um, mum came over for the Argentina Games recently. Um, so did my auntie as well. So um, yeah, they've been really supportive in in whatever I can, whatever I've been able to do, whether it's yeah with hockey or anything else. So no, they're really good. I saw your mum at the Sultan Aslan Shah as well a couple of years ago. So she's clocking up the air miles as well, following <laughs> you at the moment. Yeah, she is. Um, yeah, yeah. So she came over to Aslan Shah. Um, she's been to the the Sultan of Johor as well, the under twenty one tournament uh and they also came away to uh youth olympics in china which was pretty cool um so yeah they've, they've done a few few trips as well which is always nice to have a bit of green and gold and, and family in the stands now, now you mentioned that that the bug bit you at sort of 10 11 12 years of age and, and you were at the east club then were they a really nurturing club and sort of saw your talent and not pushed you but but i suppose nurtured it so that you could fulfill your capabilities uh, yeah, I think I think the club's been been really good. Uh, a lot of coaches um, that I had at East sort of went the whole journey with me. They coached me in under 11s and 13s, and then I might have met up with those coaches again back in sort of 15s, and and then again in in the first grade competition. But um, yeah, they were really amazing, and I had a really good group of guys around me um, that also have played really high level stuff. A few Pembroke is in the development squad. Scotty Boyd was in the development squad. So there was probably five, six, maybe even seven or eight of us that were from East and, and always around those, um, I guess, national squads and, and state teams. Um, but, yeah, the club was amazing. They were always really good with us, with, um, you know, nurturing us and developing us and, and just giving us the opportunity to get out on the turf. They got a turf in 2009. So they really, yeah, they really um, gave us the, the tools and, and the pitch, I guess, to really um, enjoy and love hockey and, and see how far we could take it. Now, everybody that is involved with the sport knows that hockey is not a game that pays the bills and you yeah. have to go out and get a job. You said you're still at university, you're studying marketing, but you yeah. have been working and working uh, leading up to this. And I believe you made the big decision to quit your job, to focus yeah. on the Olympics, and now we've had the Olympics postponed. How do you feel about all of that now, having made that decision? Yeah, it's certainly something I've been um, thinking about more in recent times with um, – 
yeah, with the Olympics being cancelled, I had a, a great job at Tourism WA. That was pretty amazing. And um, I actually got that through you with from your wife. Um, but, yeah, no, they were really good. And and it's probably something now that, yeah, I really wish I could have um, – I could have kept, but um, being my first on the big cycle, I really wanted to just um, get in there and, and really put all my eggs in one basket and give it all I got, um, no matter what happened with selection or, or non-selection, um, but to just be really able to say, like, I had a really good crack at it, um, and then whatever comes from it comes from it. But, but yeah, I really enjoy marketing. Um, I actually uh, went to, when I finished school, I went to uni to study design um and did six months and just didn't really enjoy it and wasn't probably ready to do uni so I, I gave that up for the rest of the year and then um went into studying business and then once I once the hockey got a bit more serious and I couldn't really attend uni um one thing that was online was marketing so that's sort of how I got into it and and just in, enjoyed the creative design side of it but also um the rest of it you know why you make decisions why you do this and that and the data that sort of goes in behind it so yeah, that's why I'm interested in marketing, I guess. So are you up to date now with all your assignments because you've got plenty of time on your hands? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's been uh, it's been quite good. Uh, we probably have almost double the amount of time that we normally do for our assignments just because no training and things like that and you're sort of stuck inside. So, no, it's been good to sort of chip away. And, and the other silver lining of, if there is one, I guess, of the Olympics being cancelled is I'll be able to graduate later this year. Um so I've got I've got six subjects left. I'm doing three at the moment, then three next uh, next semester. So um, that's something I guess I can tick off in 2020, even though the Olympics wasn't around. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll hopefully graduate by the end of the year. Do you think that'll help you then almost be able to focus mentally? It sort of made it easier for you the disappointment of the Olympics because obviously you were channeling all your attention to July, and yeah. now that's gone aside. You can finish your degree. And then you can look at July next year. So in a way, yeah. it could be to your advantage. Yeah, in a way, it certainly could be to my advantage. Um, I think one thing I've always been a big believer of, though, is that you should always have something else around that that is beyond hockey. Um, as you mentioned before, it's not something that's always going to pay the bills or pay the bills at all. But um, I think I, might, I may go back and study a little bit, but it's certainly, yeah, something that could be to my advantage um, going into next year and not really having anything else to worry about. Um, I really wanted to graduate this year, even with the Olympics around, but um, I would have sort of put that on hold for it, obviously, given the big opportunity. But, um, but yeah, it'll be good to, to finish and then have a really good think at the end of the year what I want to do next year, if I want to do anything at all with the Olympics or whether I, yeah, again, just put all my eggs in the one basket and just really have a good crack at, at yeah, getting to, getting to Tokyo. Now, you mentioned earlier when we were just chatting there about you'd, you'd attended the uh, – Youth Olympics and the Junior World Cup. Now, the Youth Olympics is obviously a five-a-side tournament. The yeah. FIH have announced that there's going to be a five-a-side World Cup coming up. Yeah. What are your feelings on that? Do you see five-a-side hockey as a bit like T20? Or are you a traditionalist, so the 11-a-side yeah. is the pinnacle? Or how do you feel about it, having played both? Yeah, I think I think it's certainly um, an exciting game. And I think, um, yeah, there's a big opportunity for the guys if they if they want to go down that path. But I'd say for me, I'm a bit of a traditionalist. I'd sort of love the 11 aside and love that um, the Olympics has always been the pinnacle. Uh, but yeah, I think I think there could be a place in it for um, for the future. You know, T20s taken off in in cricket and things like that. So um, I think it'd be a really exciting game. A little bit shorter. Um, yeah, so I think yeah, I think it's a great opportunity and, and a good initiative. I would say. With your marketing hat on, I mean, I see it as a great way to market the game to people who don't necessarily play the 11-a-side hockey. So for me, you could drop it into a city centre in, in some country and say, hey, this is what hockey is all about. Do you, do you see that as the advantage of the game as well? Yeah, I think that's certainly an advantage. I mean, for cricket, it was always, you know, like the t is over in a couple of hours versus um, versus a test match or, or one day that goes for eight hours. So... I think that's certainly something, and and it'd be high scoring, I guess. Having played at Youth Olympics games were a little bit high scoring versus a one nil or a two nil. I think there would have been maybe one or two games max out of, I guess, 25, 30 games. So yeah, it's much more exciting, and and more things can happen. The boards are pretty cool as well. It just brings that extra dynamic to the game. Um, that maybe sort of it's it's been lost in in recent times with teams playing zonal and things like that. Um, but no, I think, yeah, I think it's a great idea and a good initiative that'll bring something exciting to hockey. 
Now, one of the initiatives that we had here in Australia was, of course, the, the new league that was brought out last year, the Sultana Brown Hockey One League. How important is it for players like yourself who've moved from east to coast to the west coast to live in Perth and you get that chance to represent your state and put on the colours of Queensland and, and be really proud of where you're from? Yeah, I think it's really important. Um, it's sort of the the team that you make when you think, like, oh, you know, like the Kookaburras is just so close sort of thing, the, the AHL team. Um, and you get to play, if you're not in the Kookaburras, you get to play with Kookaburras. And I think the the advantage of, of being from the, Bla the Blades, sorry, or Brisbane Blades as it, is, as it is now is there's always been a really good culture of inclusiveness and um, and guys loving playing Queensland, you know, the – the, it's the state of origin rugby league age old thing that's you know Queensland. So um, yeah, I would say it's really special for us to to put on that jersey. And um, for me, I get to go and play with some of my mates that I've played with for many years from East, or whether it's guys from other clubs that I played in um, national under twenty ones or eighteens teams with. Um, so yeah, I think it's really nice to to go back and and play in that. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I love playing for, for Brisbane and, and I love playing for the Blades and Blaze uh, as it is now. Um, so, yeah, I think it's really cool and, and a good initiative for Mocky Australia. And what's the sort of bragging rights situation within the Kookaburra <laughs> squad when you get into that environment? Is there a little bit of niggle on the side? Yeah, I think there's a fair bit of niggle. And, um, yeah, my housemates from New South Wales and they got the wood over us in the final um, this year, so um, so yeah, they let me know about it when we got back into Perth and and back home. But no, nah, it's all it's all good fun. There's always a bit of niggle, you know. We're we're always so competitive and um, and we want to beat each other in training and things like that. So it's sort of no different when you go out there. You're just in other colours playing for another team. You you, you know you always want to beat your mate. And there's that little bit of niggle there, but um, at the end of the day, you're always you know really good mates with guys and and it's nice to finish your game and yeah just have a yarn with folks and and yeah talk about hockey so yeah uh, it seems to me that tim brown's got the wood over you in a few way, more ways than one not just on the hockey pitch simon orchard we knew had some shocking haircuts during his career <laughs> i believe that yours now of late have been the result of tim brand with the shears <laughs> yeah brandy's brandy's had the shears for a little while um it's been sort of something that's been pretty fun since we've moved in here just save a bit of money, I guess, and, and just have, have a bit of fun on, on days off. Um, Sharpie gets a little, gets a, a buzz cut sort of all over and Brandy just has a crack with the with the clippers over me and Tom. So, no, nah, it's good fun and, and it's something that, you know, we enjoy doing on the weekend or, or a day off, just sort of sit in the front yard with the clippers and, yeah, have a bit of fun. But, yeah, I'd have to say he's, uh, he's improved a little bit, but there's been some shockers over the last couple of months. Well, Tim, it's been fantastic catching up with you. You take care of yourself in isolation and make sure Sav keeps cooking you some good food so that you keep the weight on. We don't want yeah. you wasting away. And I must say your hair is looking really good at the moment. Yeah, thanks, Ash. Thanks, mate. Thanks, guys. Stay safe. And um, we look forward to getting back out there and playing for the Kookaburras at the end of this year and, and next year going forward to Tokyo. No, and absolutely. And, of course, if everybody wants to stay in touch with the Kookaburras and the Hockey Roos, you can go to the various social media pages online and hockey australia as well we'll keep you up to date you've also got the hashtag hockey at home which is part of this this interview has been part of that series we hope you've enjoyed it there will be more to come in the future but in the meantime i thank you for your company and ask you all to stay safe and stay strong <laughs>